Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Bonnie and I'm the Farmhouse Witch and today we're going to talk about budget witchcraft. Witchcraft does not have to be expensive and it should not be expensive. I've been in this space for a long time. I'm somebody who likes to shop but I also love to save money. So I'm going to give you all my tips and tricks when it comes to obtaining witchy tools and witchy items on a budget. I want to take a second to address like overconsumption, capitalism, and consumerism in general. We live in a capitalistic society. Sometimes people villainize spending money, but if you work hard for your money, you deserve to spend that money however it is that you want. I am just a person who chooses to save my money when I can. With that said, marketing these days is insane. Algorithms are insane. I talked about it in my last video. I'll link it up here. But with fear of missing out and imposter syndrome, sometimes you can feel like I'm not witch enough or I'm not a witch unless I have this or that and that's not the mindset you want to fall into like all of that is BS you don't need anything to be a witch but yourself and obviously this is coming from my lens as a folk practitioner but when I think about the roots of magic and folk magic specifically like our ancestors used what they had like sticks and mud they didn't have bougie new age stores or witchy shops they just worked with the land and what was around them and I think that's what's most important especially for me and my practice our society and social media can make you feel like you need to spend your money on certain items and it can also lead to like other issues of overconsumption and just owning too much stuff in general like things you don't need and I try to stay away from that like I try to own things that are practical and things that I can actually use and I've been on the other end where I own a lot of things or too many things things I don't need or use in general so I try to be mindful of that and avoid overconsumption myself with all of that said let's go ahead and hop into it the first thing that I want to say is sometimes you have to put the craft in witchcraft I know creativity is not everybody's jam crafting is not everybody's jam that is such a big part of witchcraft. And if you find yourself not being that creative of a person or not very crafty, that's another way you can challenge yourself. Personally, I've always loved arts and crafts. Like I have a huge craft closet in my witchy room and a lot of those supplies I use in my actual practice, but there's really no limitation when it comes to crafting for your own practice. And an example of this is making your own set of divination tools. You can take rocks that you collect outside and make runes. You can use your printer or a library printer to print off or draw your own tarot cards. And if you're feeling really creative, you can even make up your own divination system that works for you and make it out of whatever materials you feel like. You can even make your own black scrying mirror by just taking a cheap picture frame from Dollar Tree or maybe a thrifted picture frame or one you already own. You can take it apart and paint black paint on one side of the glass, put it back together and use that in your practice. If you're feeling a little bit of blockage when it comes to the creative side of being in the craft, then I encourage you to explore a variety of mediums. Clay is something that I'm starting to experiment with. I'm not the best at it. I'm not super artistic when it comes to clay but you can make offering bowls, you can make candle holders, you can make sculptures of your deities if you're very artistic. You can also make altar tiles and if you're good at painting or drawing you can make pictures for your deities, you can make pictures to use in your craft on your altar. I mean the possibilities here are endless and the biggest takeaway I want you to have from this section is if you struggle with getting the general ideas for creative things because sometimes I'm that way like I'm a very creative person but sometimes just getting ideas is hard for me and I like to see other people's ideas because I think that's very inspiring and it helps me kind of get out of that rut. I look for witchcraft videos that are crafty on YouTube and there's so many of them. Like there's a whole channel and I'll have to like pop it up on screen if I find it. But she does crafts for witchcraft like every week on her channel and she has for the longest time and most of the time she uses very cheap material and a lot of Dollar Tree items. I've seen so many people on YouTube create things I wouldn't have even thought of for their own practice which I just think is awesome and unique and you're putting your energy into that thing when you're crafting it which I also think is just awesome. The last thing I want to talk about when it comes to crafting is your book of shadows and this is like not where crafting ends because this could be a whole video by itself. I mean, there is just so many ways you can make things for your craft. And I encourage you to go on YouTube and find different videos of crafts if you're feeling crafty and you want to make things on your own. But when it comes to your book of shadows, I know some people want a very artistic, very put together book of shadows. And an easy way to do that is by taking a book or something you already have, a notebook, a binder, and then making sort of a junk journal 
Not everybody likes this style, but this is the style I personally use, which is like a junk journal scrapbook style where I will take pieces of scrapbook paper or articles or things that I print out and I will put it in a book of shadows. Now I did buy my book of shadows, but I've seen other content creators take an actual book, like an antique book, and copy and paste stuff over that and create their own book of shadows, which is a great way to reuse material. Hands down, one of my favorite tools in my practice is my printer because I put that thing to work. I print off things all the time for my book of shadows or things that I want to use in spell work and I just love having a printer. I think it was one of the best investments I've ever made. If you don't have a printer though, you can go to your local library and it's usually like 15 or 20 cents per page and you can print things off there. All right, let's take a second to actually talk about studying witchcraft because a lot of people have the misconception that to even study witchcraft or to read about witchcraft and learn, it costs money because you have to buy a bunch of books and that's not the case. Books are great tools and of course I have a ton of books in front of me so I'm not going to be the one telling you that you can't buy books but here are some ways that you can study on a budget. If you're searching for some sort of historical document, maybe it's an account of ancient deities or an account of witch bottles because those have been well documented and you want actual like scholarly articles to learn about those. You can use websites like Google Scholar and a lot of times if you're a college student, your college will give you free access to scholarly journals, which is like amazing. JSTOR is another online platform that also has a ton of scholarly articles, but again, you can use that for primary sources you can use it to cross-reference and learn about history. And aside from those primary sources and scholarly articles and materials, you can also find books, witchy books, at your local library. Library systems are so underrated because you get access to free books. All you have to do is walk in and ask for a library card and it's even great in terms for previewing material. So if you are really on a budget and with a book, like buying a book, sometimes it's a hit or miss because you don't get to read the book before you buy it. So you're either going to love it or hate it, but you can use your local library as a way to get a preview of those books. And if you end up really liking a book and you're like, this is something I would reference all the time in my practice, then you can go out and buy the book. And obviously it depends on your location. Some libraries are gonna have a big selection when it comes to witchcraft and paganism. Some are gonna have a tiny selection, but a lot of library systems have like a book borrowing process where if they don't have something, they can order it for you from another library and then you can check it out. Some libraries even have programs where they will ship it to you directly and then you just ship it back. Also, if there's a book that you really, really wanna read and you can't find it anywhere and maybe they can't get it in for you, you you can also check their online catalog because a lot of library systems will have books online that you can read on your laptop or even your Kindle, so definitely check those out. If you're someone who is on a budget, try to repurpose items that you already have and think out of the box. So most of us in witchcraft, when we think of repurposing items, we think of jars and that's an easy one, right? Like if you use something in cooking that has a jar, like a lot of sauces, like marinara sauces come in jars. You can obviously reuse those. Baby food jars are great to reuse. Basically any type of glass container you can pretty much reuse. You can use it for spell jars. You can use it to store your herbs. I've even seen people use like mason jars to store candles in like the little chime candles so all of those are great ideas. Reusing jars is great, but there is a ton of other things that you can reuse in your own practice. And a lot of that is stuff you use every day. So if you're a person who wears makeup or jewelry or perfume or cologne, you can easily use those in glamour magic. You can enchant certain objects you already have for protection. Maybe it's a car charm and you are enchanting that for protection. Maybe you're gonna use your jewelry to help you get a job. Maybe you're gonna use your jewelry for a love spell. Maybe you're going to use your cologne to attract a partner, to attract money, what have you. I mean, there's no limitations, but I just want you to start thinking outside of the box. Look at what you own and, and think about how it can be used in terms of what you actually need. Like think of where you are, what you're trying to achieve, and how you can use those items to help you get there. Also, notebooks, binders, folders are great things to reuse. My personal method when it comes to creating my book of shadows is that I use a binder and I write notes in those binders. I don't personally like annotate my books unless it's like a book that I absolutely love. I will go in and write notes sometimes, but I'm not a person who typically likes to write in my books. 
I prefer to write myself notes on what I'm reading or what I'm learning in a regular binder and then I will take the information from that binder later on and transfer it in a more artistic way into my actual book of shadows. Also if you go through your closet and you find stuff that you just don't want anymore and maybe you're going to give it away or throw it away, please don't throw it away. Always donate your stuff if you're not going to use it but you can also repurpose it. So fabric is a great thing. You can make tarot bags, you can make poppets, you can make charm bags. I mean the list goes on and on. You could even take strips of it and use it and not magic. Scarves for example make fantastic altar cloths and I I have altar cloths but sometimes I don't use them because they just end up getting really messy but if you have a scarf or some sort of fabric that you don't mind maybe burning holes through or incense getting on then that's like a perfect altar cloth that you can use. Now it's really easy to thirst after aesthetic beautiful witchy tools and I'm not saying that witchcraft isn't beautiful and that beautiful things are wrong because I own a ton of beautiful things. But sometimes you just need something that works. And this is going to be kind of gross, but this is a beat up pan. It's really rusty. It's nasty. And instead of throwing it away or giving it away, I use it to burn candles on. I use it to mix salts up and things that I craft within my practice. And although this is something that looks dirty and is kind of nasty and certainly wouldn't gain traction on Instagram because it's not aesthetic, it's something that works and it's something that's practical. Also, hand-me-down items from family members are very practical. This is a silver tray. It is real sterling silver. I got this from my grandparents who have both passed away. I have a lot of their stuff but things from your family could be great for creating an ancestor altar or you could even use this as an altar by itself. You could burn candles on it. I mean whatever you need to do you could make this work. Now if you're a person who likes to use herbs in your craft then you'll understand buying bulk herbs can get really expensive very quickly and a lot of witchy stores will actually upsell like the cheapest items for no reason when it comes to herbs. And my best recommendation here is to look at your different foreign grocery stores. So if you have a Mexican supermarket or an Asian supermarket a lot of times those places will sell herbs in bulk quality for very cheap. Foraging for your materials is also an option. Just be very careful though in terms of like what you're actually doing because some plants are poisonous and there's some things that you shouldn't be touching. I'm also not condoning that you eat anything that you forage because you don't know if pesticide has been sprayed on that so just try to avoid that. This really goes back to the root of folk magic which is working with the land and what's around you and the first herb that comes to my mind which is really a flower is honeysuckle because that's everywhere in Oklahoma and that's something that I still use in my practice. Dirt is another great thing that you can forage for, obviously graveyard dirt, use your graveyard etiquette, that'll be a different video for a different day, I'm not getting into that right now, but you could use bank dirt, you could use grass from a bank if you're doing a prosperity spell. Maybe you're trying to move to a certain area or a specific home, then you could use dirt or a flower or some type of plant material from that actual space. Obviously there's also sticks and rocks and you can use those to build things for your crafts. You can make wands, you can make wreaths. Sometimes on a walk or just out in nature you might be lucky enough to stumble upon animal remains or feathers. I have the caveat to this though and just say be careful with what you take and try to always be respectful of the land but also know the laws of your certain area because a lot of times if you're at a state park or somewhere like that you cannot take things that you find. It's also illegal to possess certain types of bird feathers or animal parts so just be mindful of that and research on that before you get to where you're going and you're gonna forage. And what I like to do when I'm taking something from a foraging trip is to give some sort of offering in return. This doesn't have to be elaborate. It can be sweet, short, and simple. In general, foraging is just a great option though because it can help you build that relationship to the land that you live by and it's just a great practice to be mindful and to go and spend time in nature and yes, touch grass because we're in a digital age and sometimes social media and everything online is just too much and you need to go and be in nature to just chill out and let everything out. All right, let's talk about Dollar Tree, which is one of my favorite places. Now it's the Dollar 25 tree, but nevertheless, there are a ton of videos, by the way, on YouTube about Dollar Tree witchy items. There's even videos about how to build an altar from Dollar Tree items. If you're in a specific tradition that requires you to set up your altar in a traditional way, there's videos dedicated to that and how to find those tools that are cheap at Dollar Tree. In general, Dollar Tree literally has it all. Now they have aroma diffusers, they have candles, votive candles in all different colors. They have pillar candles. 
They have mirrors if you work with mirror magic. Mirrors are also great for reversal and a lot of Dollar Trees nowadays also have a craft aisle so they have actual material that you can make things with like make art. I'm just going to show you some of the stuff that I use all the time that's from Dollar Tree. So the first thing are these like silver platters. I use them for actual spell work. So I will lay down like salt or whatever it is that I'm using, candles, and I will burn them on here. They're kind of gross and waxy. This one has hot glue on it because I was using it when I was crafting earlier. Some of them have paint on them and wax, but I use them a lot. Also, candles from Dollar Tree are like my favorite thing ever. They have a variety of colors, like literally a full rainbow of colors when it comes to the seven day votives. Do they actually light for seven days? I don't know. I typically use them in like three or four days. I'm just realizing this one has a chip in it from me moving. But my favorite way to use these because I like to put herbs and oils in my candles and obviously if it's an votive like this, you can't actually hold the candle in your hand and rub things in. I get the barbecue skewers, which are just metal sticks from Dollar Tree, and I will literally push in holes in the candle and shove oil and herbs down in there. I also take the wrapping off of the actual candle and then I will draw sigils sometimes or words or a petition. Again, these are just so versatile, but a staple in my witchy practice. Also, when it comes to Dollar Tree, like tools that I think are kind of essential for any witchy space are cleanup tools and just practical tools. So you could get office supplies like scissors, you can get labels for your oils, you can get disinfectant wipes to wipe the oils off of your hands after you're done working with whatever materials you're working with. Also, you can get small trash bags or a trash can just to have on deck, which is very helpful when you're working in your space so you're not just creating a huge mess. Maybe that's just a me thing, but I personally find like items for cleaning up are essential. All right, now we're going to end the video with talking about thrifting and secondhand items in general. Thrifting is one of my favorite things to do. Going to the thrift store can be a hit or miss. You never know what you're going to find. When you're at a thrift store, these are my tips for you. First, go look in the fabric section. Look for placemats, pillowcases, scarves, or anything like that that could be used to create poppets, charm bags, or that you could use as altar cloths. Also go down the aisle that has shelving because you can use shelves to store your herbs or even make an altar out of. If you need storage, you can look at baskets. If you're looking for plates, you can go down the dining ware section and look for silver plates or bowls. I've even seen glass candle holders. Also go down the candle aisle because sometimes there's whole pillar candles that aren't even used that you can literally repurpose. And don't forget to go to the book section because I have found witchy books at the thrift store before for like $2, which is insane. All right, and this might be the best part of the video because I'm going to give you my tip here to find witchy books at the thrift store. If you've ever been to a thrift store, some book sections are not even organized by genre. And even if they do have organized sections, sometimes the witchy books aren't where they're supposed to be. So my tip when it comes to finding witchy books is to just look at the book's spine and look for two logos, either the Lone Wellen logo, that's a moon, or the Wiser Book logo. I put them both on the screen here for you. There are other witchy publishers, but these are the two biggest names and have been for a very long time. So it just makes it very easy to spot. Also, if there's a particular item that you're looking for, like a book, for example, then you can go to a secondhand bookstore like Half Price Books and try to find it there. Also, a lot of secondhand bookstores will have tarot decks and other forms of divination for very cheap. You can go to antique stores. You can also look for things on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, but just be very careful and safe. Like always bring somebody with you. Always try to meet in a public place if you can. Never go somewhere and meet somebody you don't know for the first time by yourself. That's just not a good idea. And can we just talk for a second about the stigma that comes with secondhand things? A lot of people are scared of buying secondhand items when it comes to the craft because they think that it's gonna have some sort of energy attached to it. And if that's something that you're concerned about it, literally just spiritually cleanse it. That's all you have to do and then it's good as new. All right, and I wanted to add in a little montage of things that I picked up from the thrift store or other places for very cheap. Now, I went to pick up this roll top desk in Nebraska and you have seen this on my channel. It's in my room tour if you want a more in-depth picture of it, but I got this for 20 bucks and when I showed up, it was a little old lady and she told me she had another desk she would give me for free, which is what I use for my office desk. 
but yeah and it actually closes and everything so definitely look on facebook marketplace this little cauldron looking thing has sand in the bottom of it i got that from a thrift store the sand is always from dollar tree by the way i don't live in florida anymore so i don't have access to sand but they sell bags of sand at Dollar Tree and you can use that for your cauldrons. The candle holders that I have for my spheres are also from the thrift store, multiple thrift stores over time. And this little storage box right here that I use for incense is also from the thrift store. I just keep cone incense inside. Both of the trays that I keep my little bitty crystals in are also from the thrift store. And then of course I have a giant silver tray I've used this as an altar by itself in the past or just to do spells on. Little glass dishes like this are perfect to work magic in if you're doing candle spells. If you have a bigger dish, you could use it as an offering bowl. If you can go into a cigar shop, ask for their boxes because most cigar shops will give you the boxes once they're done with them. And I have two bigger ones that I use to hold all of my witchy oils, but don't be scared to ask because they're usually just going to get thrown out anyways. All right, let's talk about free witchy things, which can feel hard to come by. And I know like nobody really uses Facebook anymore because it's a boomer platform, but Facebook has some hidden gems. There are Facebook pages that are dedicated to people giving stuff away. It can be a great opportunity to find furniture to use for altars and a whole bunch of other stuff. One of my favorite altars, which is, I think it was in my last room tour. I don't own it anymore. It was an old TV stand and somebody put it on the curb for a big trash day. And I ended up picking that up and redoing it. And I used that as an altar for like years and years. Also, if you're a military spouse, most bases will have an airman's attic and you have to look up the rules and regulations on the specific base you're at. But usually if your spouse is under a certain rank, you can go in there and get whatever you want for free. It's basically just like a thrift store, but everything is free. All right, I hope this inspired you to go out and find new witchy items on a budget. I'm gonna end the video here because I've been talking long enough. I hope everybody watching this has a great day. If nobody's told you, I love you, and I will see you in the next video.